All right, this is first grade module four, lesson 14. And in this lesson, we're gonna continue using the count on method and the making 10 strategies uh, to add numbers, particularly when going over a 10, over one of those benchmark landmark numbers. So let's get started on this. So here it says to draw the quick tens and ones and then complete the number sentence and fill in, of course, that place value chart. All right, so uh, first thing we're going to do, and really this is largely the count on method, parents and teachers, you're going to see this. Uh, we're going to start by modeling that 28. And so 28, we'll start with a quick 10, another quick 10, and then 8. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there is our representation for 28, so two 10s and eight 1s. Now to show that we're going to add in two more, we're just going to go one, two. And because we're sort of paying attention, and we know that every time you get 10, that equals a quick 10. So I knew that I could take these eight, add two more, and get 10. So really, this equals another quick 10. So what do we end up with? We end up with three tens and zero ones, so our answer is 30. Now, parents and teachers, a lot of us can look back and we'd say, yeah, look at this, 28. I can hold a fist and say 28, and then I could go 29, 30. And I, now I'm holding up two fingers, right? And so that's much quicker than what we just did here, right? And that is true. But what what we're doing down here is we're trying to develop place value. We're trying to develop number sense. The idea of uh, 8 plus 2 is 10, and that's that adds in a, a third 10, like a quick 10 here. Uh, we're leading students towards the standard algorithm this way, whereas if you just kind of count you know, say 28 and punch the air with the fist and then say 29, 30 and, and count two more. Yes, that works, but it's not leading towards the standard algorithm. So it's worth uh, doing all this rigmarole down here because we know it's going somewhere. Let's do this again. Now we're going to model 28 plus 7. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to model two tens. And now we're going to model our um, eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's our 28. Now, the idea is when we do our seven, we know that first we want to fill up the 10. So this is where having students practice knowing what is needed to fill up a 10. So like... Um, if I were, I'm going to take a quick step backwards. So if I were to say eight, we'd want the kids to say two. Or if I were to say six, I would want the kids to say four. Because I want students to be able to quickly recognize how much more they need in order to create ten. So when they see eight, I want students to immediately know that they have two more to fill in a ten, to create a ten. And that leaves us five more from our seven. So the idea is, where is our seven? Our seven is right here, but I'm just kind of putting two of them here to complete a 10. And then we have five remaining over here. So how many tens do we end up with? We end up with three tens. How many ones do we end up with? Well, we end up with only five ones because two of them got used up in, to create that third 10. So of course our answer is 35. Last slide for this video, just two more problems. We're going to do essentially what we've been doing in the previous slide, only now we're going to notate it using a number bond. So the idea is uh, when we look at this 5, we want to think, well, how much more do I need to make a 10? Well, I need 5 more to make a 10, 
which means we're going to decompose this 8 to be 5 and 3. Because now we can see that 25 plus 5 gives us 30. And now we're going to add in that remaining 3 to get 33. Now to be really precise, I might want to, to notice that I did 25 plus 5 and I just wrote 30 right here. So to be really precise, we might want to put 25 plus 5 equals 30 there. And then we're going to take the 30 and add our remaining 3. And it kind of adds an extra step that I of, is of questionable value for me. But hey, parents and teachers, pay attention to it. This may be a line that some of your students absolutely need to write down in order to feel successful. Let's take a look over here. So again, we have 23. And we need to think about how much more do I need to get to 10? to the next value, to the next benchmark. And I know I need seven more. So I'm going to take my nine and I'm going to decompose it to seven and two. And now I can see that, oh, 23 plus seven, that's going to give me 30. So I'm going to show that extra step right here. So 23 plus seven, that gives me my 30. And now I can take 30, add in that remaining two and that gives me 32. So in both cases, I forgot to write fill in that place value chart. So how many tens do we end up with? We end up with three tens. How many ones do we end up with? We end up with two ones. So our answer is 32. Going back here, how many tens did we end up with? We ended up with three tens. How many ones? Three ones. So our answer is and that wraps up first grade, module four, lesson 14, using two strategies, the count on and the make 10 strategies to add, particularly when going across a 10.